The chip will be the seal of Satan on people's souls, and those who take it will be doomed for eternity. The others will be beheaded. But taking the mark will be like selling your soul to the devil, and people will do it so they can buy food, keep their place in society, and of course avoid being executed. Acts 2.17 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. The people you are about to hear discuss prophetic visions of the great tribulation and what will happen to those who don't take the mark. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share to make the algorithm recommend this video to more people. Make sure you watch till the end, and I guarantee you 100% that your life and your vision of this world will never ever be the same. You will understand why living in this world without knowing Jesus Christ is beyond suicidal. It's up to you to keep on watching and take the red pill or close this video. Take the blue pill and stay on the road to the slaughterhouse. But in time, mm -hmm. vision a, man, a woman had that goes with my testimony. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was in the end times of twofold revelation, I saw when the church was captured, caught out, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I saw the world and the American flag was burned, cracked and burned. And I saw army troops all over the world. Mm -hmm. I saw army trucks come in and, and uh, with guns and barracuda, you know, these all mm -hmm. kind of stuff and putting people in uh, big trucks, taking them to places to be tormented. Mm -hmm. I saw people with marks on their head, three sixes up here, mm -hmm. and are either on their hand. Mm -hmm. And the people that would not take the mark were beheaded in big mm -hmm. gallet with their heads chopped off. I saw awful, awful things on the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. I saw um, beasts that look like part man and part beast walking around. Mm -hmm. That people need to get ready for the coming of the Lord. Yes. The Word of God is coming to pass very quickly. Yes. And it's not to put the fear into people uh, that God will smush them. It's to let them know God expects us to turn to Him and turn from our sins mm -hmm. with, a, you know, with truth and righteousness and let Him clean up our lives. Yes, yes. And He will help us, Pastor. Mm -hmm. He will help us overcome mm -hmm. everything. Yes. And He loves us. Jesus loves us. Mm -hmm. And people need to know the love of God, yeah. but yet they need to know what's coming on the earth, and mm -hmm. he promised that he would let us foreknow things coming on the face of the earth, yeah. and if he could share that for yes. a few minutes. Now, this a scripture said that pray always that you might escape these things that's coming upon the earth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this sister I gave this book to, his uh, husband I led to the Lord, he was on one of our videos, Brother Thomas, and mm -hmm. uh, we led him to the Lord about four years ago, his wife got saved too, and I gave them the book and they read it and immediately after they began to read the book, it shook them up so much. The next night the sister went to bed and immediately she said she woke up in this dream, in her dream. In her dream, she woke up and her and her husband was looking for their little kids. They have two children. And she woke up looking for them, but she couldn't find them. And she mm. woke up her husband in the dream and he looked. They ran outside and once they ran outside, it was other individuals running outside also looking for their kids too. Mm. And she said she looked up in the air and she seen hundreds of thousands of people. Most of them was kids though going up in the air. Mm. And the voice said, this is the rapture, they're taken mm. away. She saw all of a sudden out of nowhere, just like your vision, Ms. Max, she said, the army trucks begin to come all over America and begin to bum rush the territories in the city, all different cities, and they took trucks and began to take people out of their household mm. and put them in these trucks. Mm. They took mm. them to these buildings to remind her, of a, uh, she said, of an aid office where you receive yes. uh, financial aids yes. or whatever the situation might be. And she said they would sit them down and begin to yes, tell them I that you the must take thing. this mark. Mm. And if you don't take this mark, that you are going to be killed. And she said she seen a group of people running around saying they was Christian. They began to praise the Lord and chant, Jesus is Lord. And the more they began to chant, Jesus was Lord, they began to snatch them off in different rooms. And she said she heard them being tormented in different rooms, crying and hollering and screaming out Jesus. She said, Lord, well, wait a minute. I'm a Christian. What am I doing here? He said, I, I pray to you. I, I was in your word. And she said, the voice spoke back to her and said, the reason you're here, Mickey, is because you didn't preach my word. Hmm. She said, well, Lord, why is my husband here? So the reason your husband is here, because he had unforgiveness in his heart. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I would like for y'all to know there's many people right now that's Christian mm -hmm. that have unforgiveness in their heart, mm -hmm. some against a brother or sister, some against a mother or father, some that know the word of God, that go to church every Sunday, but are afraid to preach the gospel, okay? Mm -hmm. She said from there, she be, they let her go to the washroom area, and she said they gave them three minutes to do what they had to do. She said that the water would come on, and then the water come on, people was washing their hairs, and ladies got soap in her eyes, and she began to cry that she wanted to take the mark because she couldn't get the soap out of her water immediately cut off. Mm. Mickey told her, you can have my water. And from there, she said, don't take the mark. She came back out, and she seen a special bulletin on the TV bedding in the wall like a hospital room. And on the television set, it was a special bulletin that came on. It was a man with a sneaky smile talking about, yes, uh, hundreds of people, a thousand all over, missing all over the nation. Could this be the rapture? He was sarcastic. Could this be Jesus coming back? He said, nah, I doubt it. He said, wait a minute, let's have a word for my president. She said, all of a sudden, she seen the president. And this time, Bush hadn't lost when she had this dream. Bush hadn't lost the presidency. But she said it wasn't Bush. She said the Lord covered up his face. The only thing she seen was his hand and heard his voice. Mm. He was lying to the public. Mm. And everybody was buying it. She said all of a sudden they snatched her up. They told her, come. And they began to march down a single line down this tunnel. Mm. And this tunnel they was walking through, she heard voices of different individuals crying and screaming out to Jesus. Jesus, have mercy, Lord. I love you. I love you. I'm going to die for you, Jesus. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And just get cut off. She said mm. she began to march down the stream and she seen at the other end of the tunnel, there was hundreds of them going across. She said when they got over to the other building, there was a whole room of guillotines. Mm. And the guillotine, people was actually getting their hairs cut off. Mm. She said the people that was taking the mark of the beast, when they took it on their right hand, they immediately peer, appeared on their forehead. Yes. And she said, you can see that thing in the mm. spirit and in the physical. Yes. She said, you can mm -hmm. see it. She said, when she walked over towards the next building, she seen a whole bunch of people. She said, people thought they was regular human beings, but they was really demon spirits. Yes. They had black capes on, mm. hoods over their face, but their eyes was like demon eyes, and their hands was made out of snake skin, like you said about the heart of hell. Yes. She said, with snake skin, these, these demons was cold-blooded killers. And the Lord spoke and said, that's what my word means when it said, war unto the habitants on the earth. The Satan that came amongst you with great mm. wrath because he knows time is short. Mm. This is demon spirit mm. manifesting the flesh, mm. act like people, but they had the heart to kill people. And she said they began to take people and turn their head off. And they chopped her and her husband's head off and her spirit immediately went up into the heavens. I can't explain to you how real this was. It was as real as any thing that I've ever done in my life, it is seared in my mind. I was taken to one place, witnessed, taken, put in another place, witnessed, taken, put in another place. Um, depending on where I was, I felt emotions. I could feel what other people were feeling. It was a hurry and people were rushing around. One of my dear, dear friends and sisters in Christ she was in my dream and she was excited. There was some crazy things going on, but she was excited and she was packing her suitcase. That suitcase, it wasn't filled with a bunch of belongings. That suitcase was just filled with memories. And she like latched it up and cinched it. And she's like, all right, are you ready? It's time to go. I knew what she was talking about. It was time to go home. It was time to go. And um, so we were gone. And then we were in a different place and she, she was taken and she went to be with Jesus. So I'm in a different place and these people are living off the grid. I was just witnessing, if that makes sense. I was there, but I wasn't a part of it. Um, these people, they were even in like an RV and they were, I mean, it was like life or death. They were living off the grid. It was very undercover, kind of maneuvering around, um, very secretive, and they had to be extremely careful with who they came in contact with. Um, they were not able to get their goods or their means or their food um, from anywhere typical. They and they were always in a state of emergency and fleeing and they were being persecuted and these people were running. These were people who were not submitting to the governing law. And I witnessed a different place and everywhere else that I had seen was very much impoverished and destroyed or had been um, ransacked but this place was very rich um, 
these people that were there were living in luxury. They were wallowing in um, all of their worldly things. They they just were taking their fill in of the world while all these other people are running for their lives. And these people, they, they didn't look at other people the same. They didn't even look at at them like they were equals or that they mattered then they were just enjoying um all of these luxuries and just ignoring reality and what was really happening um and there was even someone who was trying to basically like it was almost like a black market and he had lots of access to different things and he was willing to sell to uh, these people who were not supposed to be able to buy anything, but he was secretly selling, but it wasn't because he cared about them. It was just because he wanted to make money, but everything changed really fast. I don't know. I didn't see in the dream specifically the things that happened. I just was taken and I was dropped again in a completely different setting. And it was a different time period everything had changed. There were still people on the outside who were not experiencing what was truly going on. And honestly, there was a massive deception over them. They were blinded. They were blinded and they, and or they did not care. But this is what changed. Wicked, evil spirit. Wicked, evil spirits terrifying and it's it's a weird thing to explain because like i'm watching this and i'm feeling these feelings but they weren't my own feelings because i knew i was removed i could feel the fear around me i could feel the fear i could feel the anxiety i could feel the despair i could feel these feelings there were people as far as i could see and everything was dim and grave and dark. But people were turning a blind eye to this. It's like half of these people, I'm not saying half specifically, I don't know the numbers, but so many people did not even truly know what was going on or they just didn't want to know. And there was people as far as I could see, and I'm standing in line with them. At this point, I'm I'm there, and they can see me, and I'm communicating with them. These people... These people are so mutilated. Even if I knew who they were, I could not recognize them. Guys... These people were the people who were fleeing the system. These people were, these people were the people who were refusing to take the mark. They've refused to take the mark. And because they had refused to worship the beast, because they had refused to take the mark in their hand or on their forehead so that they could buy and sell and trade and live and be part of that system they were tortured they were mutilated they were sexually abused they were unrecognizable guys I'm not saying it was every single every single person but every single person that was there every single person that was there they were in a line waiting to be slaughtered and they knew what their fate was these were people who had come to faith in jesus christ in the last days in the very last days during the tribulation these were people who had come to know jesus christ as their lord and savior and they knew that they had to deny themselves. They had to deny and refuse the mark, but their faith was wavering because of their pain, because of their agony, 
because of the terrible things that were happening to them and they were trying to avoid it because they just couldn't handle it. And I was standing there and I was praying over them and I was pleading, pleading with them to just keep trusting, to just keep trusting. And I was telling them I was so sorry, but that they could not give up. They can't give up. They cannot give up. They just have to endure because as soon, as soon as Christ returns or as soon as their life is taken, they will be with the Lord Jesus and they will be rewarded for enduring that persecution. They will be rewarded and they would cry no more. Guys, it was the most disturbing, the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. Their face, their flesh had been cut away from their face. Like all of this area, the, the muscles in their face were exposed. They, they were just so mistreated. And these were people who were refusing the mark. They refused the mark and this was their punishment. I was taken up and I could see over a very large area and I could see the this line of people, these people who were being persecuted the way that they were. And it was, it was so vast. These were the people who were caught or the people who were found and they were tortured and they were abused because of the name of Jesus. They were abused and they were mocked and scoffed and honestly, the people who were doing it to him were doing everything they could to get them to curse God. When I was taken up and I could see the multitude and just the mass destruction that was taking place, there were also lines of trucks leaving this area where people were being corralled. People were being corralled and they were killed and they were slaughtered. And then just like cattle, there were these trucks and they were filled with the dead bodies. They were filled with dead bodies and blood and things were oozing out of it and they were driving them away and dumping them into this big area. And what was so crazy was the people who had taken the mark and the people on the outside, they thought that these people deserved it. It was like they believed or they had convinced people that these people needed to die and be exterminated. It was the most terrible thing I have ever seen. What you're about to hear, all I'll say is, it's the book of Revelation unfolding before a 16-year-old unsaved boy's eyes, and he was horrified, really. We decided to go to bed early that night, and it didn't take us long before we were both sound asleep. Suddenly at 11 p.m., I heard the distant sound of someone knocking very desperately on the front door. To my surprise, it was my sister accompanied by my nephew. He was in a state of shock and clearly crying as tears streamed down his face. She explained that he was having visions in real time and she did not know what to do with him. I took him into the bedroom, cast everyone out, locked the door for privacy. He goes on to explain a little bit more, but he ends in saying this, the depth of his vision were so were deeply extraordinary as he was looking upon things that I understand will happen during the tribulation period as prophesied in the book of Revelation. Listen, were you sleeping? Were you awake? Okay, so you were watching TV? 
There we got the clock. You were just staring at the clock? Okay. And what happened? As soon as it went to 12. Say that again? As soon as it went to 12, uh -huh. I started seeing a lot of like. <laughs> Horrible things. People, what they did to each other to survive. I saw a lot of fire, a lot of blood, a lot. Not dried blood, but a lot of crimson blood. Okay. You were wide awake. Yes. It all hit me all of a sudden. People were crazy. Average people just what you would think would be someone average would just come in. They turn crazy. They they like start committing cannibalism, and they would like offer to. They'd make human offerings to. <laughs> It's okay, buddy. You're good. How, how long you saw that for? I'm still seeing it. I'm still seeing it. Okay, you're good. You know what we've been talking about? What I've been talking about with your mama for a very long time? War. God. It's greater than a war. It's. I know, Papi. Listen to me, baby. There's gonna be something worse after the war. There's not gonna be anyone that's gonna win. People will claim victory, but it's not gonna be victory. It's not gonna be for fighting for good or bad it's just gonna be killing just to kill people are just gonna start killing to kill not even to survive they're just gonna kill for the satisfaction of killing like a sport god is allowing you to see the future puppy because he <coughs> want you to understand that that he is real uh, have you ever read where he says that that he will come like a thief in the middle of the night, but a thief at midnight. That means when God's time clock goes to 12, he will get his pride. Oh. Oh. But listen to me, baby. It's all true. It's oh. all true, yes. I've always doubted. I've always doubted my whole life. Oh. The only thing that we need to do is to be, to be close to him. Just ask him for, for him to, to forgive our sins. Because when that time clock reaches 12 o'clock, papi, there is nothing that you and I or anybody could do. He is not allowing you to see this because he wants you to be afraid. He wants you to be drawn I'm near not, to him. I'm not afraid. I know. I'm crying for them. <laughs> I'm crying for them. For the horror. <laughs> I'm afraid it's the last thing I am. I'm ready to do whatever I need to do. <laughs> but <laughs> the things I'm seeing, <laughs> the things I still am seeing, it's so horrible. I don't understand why how a man, a woman, kids could do such horrors. How could what was simple living could so in such a little time turn into such a horrors? It's not. But see. Do you know how the, the problem that, that we all have is that at one point we allowed God out of this nation 
We are no longer a Christian nation. And once he has, he has completely, like, people have pushed him out of the way. Like, well, we don't want you here. We want the same say. We, we want right for everything. You know, not giving the fair chance of honor God in our of our ways. So he had no choice just to to leave men doing whatever is it that they're doing. So he's allowing you so you can see what's coming ahead. So you can be witness to other people, so you can get right with God. So you can actually, you know, do right for yourself, for your family, for others. The Bible says that our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. That's why people don't understand. People don't get this. This is not, this is a spiritual war warfare. You Beware see? Beware the Catholic. Huh? Beware the Catholics. Beware of the Catholics? Why? The first word will come from them. Oh, wow. What do you mean by that, puppy? <laughs> the first word of war will come from them. Okay. <laughs> They will claim it's peace. <laughs> But it's just corruption. The only thing that matters here is for you to be right with God. Because once you are in the safe zone with God, then He will take us. Do you understand? He's showing you what you're seeing because He does not want to leave us behind. You still seeing anything? What do you see? More that. More that. They're going after the churches. Not just the churches, they're going for after people that believe in God. They're going to slaughter them mm -hmm. just slowly and painfully. They're gonna prolong their deaths to the fullest extent. And there's a man watching and smiling while it all happens. And there's another man right next to him that's shorter. <laughs> They're both shadows. The volcanoes, a lot of them, are gonna erupt the ring of fire. Because I see a deformed circle goes from Japan to like California whole area mm -hmm. all that's gonna erupt and then from there there's gonna be new land formation but it's not it's not land it's 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 lava that's been molten there's gonna be so much of it so much lava is gonna be pouring out people are gonna die a lot and they're gonna be sacrificing humans and animals to it and it's not gonna make it better it's gonna drive people insane and then they'll just accept it and start going crazy like I was looking earlier it will stop eventually but it's just gonna get worse from there people are gonna keep getting crazier and start going for the sane and from there loot them kill them make tribes And they're all savages. Ruled by no rule. There's no rules. <laughs> they're gonna be tearing up animals alive and 
eat them from there. I'm seeing it. Goats. Sheep. Cats. Dogs. Cows. They're not gonna hurt them. They're just gonna straight up see. They see it. It's food. It's alive. It's moving. It's food. It won't matter what it is. Cannibalism will be common. It won't be something weird for them. If they need to resort to it, they'll just go. They'll just go and do it. Ugh. America's not gonna have it good. America is gonna be mainly made out of savages. And Asia's gonna like all that whole area. They're gonna be hell worshippers of some sort. They're gonna be worshiping something, but it's not God. You mean in Asia? The whole area. Chinese, Asia, Japanese, they're gonna be worshipping to their to their own gods. Mm-hmm. But they're not like hieroglyphic, they're gonna be like real. They look real as if they were right there. <laughs> and they're not gonna have their skin it's different colors. It's gonna look it's like their statues only Come to life. Some of them are small, some of them are human size, and some of them are giants. That's all. <sighs> That's all. You see anything for America that you can remember? Savagery and chaos. There's not gonna be no worshiping here. It's all gonna be based on materialism. And yes, FEMA camps are coming and people will go in, but no one leaves. In one of my dreams, I saw millions of Americans lining the ditches leading out of towns all across America as they were all evicted from their homes. And most of these ended up in FEMA camps as well. War is coming to America. I saw foreign troops in America. I saw nuclear weapons go, going off over uh, major American cities. I saw America go black, cold and silent, as, as if an EMP weapon had been detonated high above America. And then America goes dark cold and deathly silent coast to coast. I saw much famine on the land. It seemed as if, as if everyone was hungry and there was no food to be had at any price. And the people resorted to eating rats, wild animals, bark, leaves, grass, and they finally resorted to eating people until this became very common among the survivors. In the tribulation, billions will die, three and a half billions, Three and a half billion, approximately three and a half billion will die in the first half of the tribulation and nearly that many in the second half of the tribulation. I saw a massive, massive wall of water come ashore at the, on the east coast and then another massive wall of water come ashore on the west coast, destroying everything in its path. I've had so many dreams of death and destruction. I saw people sitting around a campfire cutting meat from cadavers to cook and eat. I saw parents walking down a flight of stairs, holding their precious little baby in their arms so lovingly. They walked into the kitchen, they placed the baby in a pot of water on the stove, and then they turned the burner on. Now, in that dream, I never, I never saw the baby move and I never heard the baby, so I had no idea if it was alive or dead. I saw parents sell their children for a handful of rice or beans to total strangers at their front door. Jeremiah 19 and 9 and I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters and they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend I saw the sun go crazy strong with heat 
and much radiation and burned many people. Most crops, fields, grass, trees were destroyed and many people died because of the great heat. People will seem to go mad. Nature will turn against men. Even families will turn against their own. There is more written about the tribulation than any other time, including when Jesus walked the earth. So God wants you to know what's coming. And like God made a way for Noah and his family to survive the great flood, and for Lot and his family to survive the destruction of Sodom. God has provided a way for his for those faithful to Jesus Christ and his word in the King James Bible to escape the judgment to come upon the whole earth. A van pulled alongside of me that turned out to be the property owner and he greeted me and he was by himself and so we had a good little dialogue there and I asked him about the field of black boxes and uh, and his statement was that if he told me I would be one of few people in Madison Georgia that knew about them and he says they're they're uh, disposable coffins so in January of this year 2005 we decided to drive to beautiful Madison Georgia and take a look for ourselves it was on a Sunday and no one was around, with the exception of this one pickup truck that was coming out the narrow road that we were going in on next to this field. We flagged down the uh, pickup truck and it was providential that the driver of this pickup truck turned out to be the son of the man that owned this field. So naturally we started asking him questions. And he told us that not long ago, there had been as many as 500,000 of these grave liners or disposable coffins. We asked him for permission if we could look around and he said yes, so we did. We're just getting a, an idea for the size of these boxes. What could these boxes be used for? Well, they're called casket liners. My friends here, we could all probably get inside and it might be a little cozy, but we'd fit just fine which tells me that these liners can be used for more than just one. And we're told that there are about, well, there were about 500,000 out here. 